Uh, all right. Okay. In my last video, I sat here and I asked the question, what is going on with Nintendo? It was a matter of days ago because we hadn't heard anything about Metroid. We had no idea what was happening with the Switch this year past Xenoblade Chronicles and maybe No More Heroes 3. And in the last few days, a lot of things have happened. A lot of really, well, things have happened. <laughs> I was gonna say really exciting. I'm gonna rephrase it. Things have happened that I'm excited for, but I can totally see why people maybe still are a little hesitant to get excited just yet. Uh, first up, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. Subscribe if you haven't already. We have fun here. We have good times. Getting close to that million. Also, brand new microphone. It looks the same as the old one, but trust me, it's more expensive <laughs> so if, let me know if it sounds better or if i just wasted like half a grand <laughs> for no reason first up i'm gonna shut up you know you're you're here for one reason and one reason only and that's for the hot news that's for the hot goss out on the street i don't know what i'm saying uh very first up we had the, i woke up this morning as i was sipping on my cup of joe to a new Paper Mario, which, excitingly, wasn't just an announcement that one was coming at some point soon, maybe, who knows when. No, it actually has a release date, and I, if I remember correctly, July 27. Alright, so we went from not knowing about any Nintendo stuff in the coming horizon past Xenoblade Chronicles to an entire Paper Mario game in a couple of months. Nintendo is so good at keeping secrets, it's insane. The entire Last of Us 2 was leaked months before the game came, has, the game's not even out yet. We, we can already go see that whole game. But Nintendo manages to be like, oh, we have a, a full Mario game coming in a couple of months, so that's cool. Let's take a look at it. Uh, I looked through the trailer maybe like 17 times already. My keen eyes mostly looking out for gameplay because that was the biggest issue everyone's ever had with Paper Mario games since Thousand Year Door. And the combat? Oh, it's interesting. <laughs> okay, so I have to say, I think it it looks very nice. <laughs> I really enjoyed Color Splash for its story and its visuals. The gameplay, obviously, much like most of you, very repetitive, very lackluster, very not exciting at all. But the visuals and the story were excellent. And I'm feeling the same way about this one. However, I can't help but laugh a little bit at uh, something I saw. A lot of you might know Arlo is a huge Paper Mario fan. Uh, and someone shared this on Twitter and it popped up in my feed and it's too good. <laughs> and then Nintendo gives us a direct announcing Paper Mario into the fold and it's all about origami. My heart can't take that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, it just can't. <laughs> I love the little... Yeah, it, it, it just, just can't. <laughs> okay, so that was a video a year ago. It's like Nintendo almost waited. It's, it's almost like Nintendo heard that. And immediately went, Origami. Biggest fan, Arlo is gonna love this. <laughs> Much love, Arlo. <laughs> I feel bad for him right now. <laughs> I think my biggest complaint with this trailer, um, the, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I try not to judge things before I have them in my hands, but this trailer isn't really telling me much. Like, I get that it's about origami, and it, there's a few screenshots of some pretty looking areas. But I mean, Color Splash had some pretty looking areas. Obviously, it it seems like completely got rid of the cards and the stickers to a lot of people's extreme joy. So th th this is the gameplay. It's on a ring, which gives a whole new meaning to uh, turn-based combat. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I don't know, you kind of turn it to line them up, which it doesn't seem like a very complicated mechanic, but maybe th that can obviously be fleshed out more if you have a lot of enemies on the ring and they can all be lined up in one turn. That's all we got, though, to, which I think is criminal. That's all we have to work on. But I hope a lot of Paper Mario fans are really excited. I hope Arlo can find excitement, <laughs> despite what he said a year ago. 
That'll be an interesting reaction for sure. All right, well, uh, there's that. I have more though. I have, a, I have, I have a few things more. Before we talk about Metroid Prime 4, which I'm really excited about. So, ooh, it's like that one I'm excited for. <laughs> I don't know what that noise was. There's some cool developments happening there. We finally heard something. But before we dive into that, I don't want to pass over. I, I want my opportunity to talk about the PlayStation 5 gameplay reveal really quickly because I don't want, wait. Because there's something really exciting about it that I feel like a lot of people, it's not really sinking in. A lot of people, it's not really grasping the full concept of what just happened. And I did talk about the whole Xbox lineup event thing that happened, so it feels wrong to not talk about the whole PlayStation 5 thing. The uh, Summer Games! Are you liking it so far? Because it's actually been kind of cool. Instead of an E3 this year, it seems like Nintendo are just going to be dropping trailers for games like they did this morning with Paper Mario, which was cool to wake up to. And then uh, Summer Games is a thing. It's hosted by Jeff Keighley. First thing he did was announcing Tony Hawk 1 and 2 remastered thingy with the Hawkster himself. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 is the bridge that manages to connect gamers and non-gamers. Just everyone loves that game. It's, I don't know, universally loved. So we had that, and then the next day, he revealed some PlayStation 5 gameplay, which technically was PlayStation 5 gameplay because it was apparently, <laughs> as I said, running purely on PlayStation 5 hardware. However, what they were showing, it wasn't a PlayStation 5 game. It was like a test demo built within Unreal Engine 5. And Unreal Engine isn't by any means a, a PlayStation exclusive thing. And that is what I feel like a lot of people are missing. And that is what I feel like is really exciting here. That, that's the big key. Triangles. Oh, triangles. If you are a square guy, this trailer was not for you because it was all about triangles and lighting. That's, that is a lot of triangles. Before we can really dive into what Unreal Engine 5 means, we have to take a look at Unreal Engine itself. Guarantee you that there is a game you love, at least one, but probably multiple that were made with Unreal Engine. I mean, just take a look at this list. Crazy diverse this engine is and how fantastic this engine is, how easy it is to work with, and how great games end up looking if you fully utilize the engine. One of the best examples I can think of of recent years, most, uh, all the Gears of War games have been built with Unreal Engine, and the newest Gears 5 was built with Unreal Engine 4. That game looked gorgeous. The dynamic lighting effects, all it's just there was so much going on in that game. But I mean, it expands so far. Borderlands 3, even Daemon X Machina on Switch. That is why Unreal Engine 5 is so exciting. Not because this is an example of what one game, whatever this test demo might look like. It's not an example of of what play all PlayStation 5 games are gonna look like. It's just an example of what an engine that the next generation of games can use and utilize to its fullest extent. Like what is possible with this engine that will then go on to be used in hundreds and hundreds of games that we all love, no matter what kind of gamer you are. There's, there's just so many possibilities here. And that's what they're showing off. Like that truly, that is what they are showcasing here, what this engine can do in all the different ways that it can do the things that it can do. A lot of people ask the question, where do games go now? Because <laughs> especially getting late this gen, things are getting more and more realistic. And the biggest one, is those dynamic effects like lighting and atmosphere and things like that because those things can add so much into a game to make it feel real, to breathe life into it. That's what's really exciting about this and I wanted to call attention to it. It's not so much, again, what the PlayStation 5 can do, which it is obviously cool to see this running on a PlayStation 5. It's what this engine can do. Oh, and of course the triangles. <laughs> Metroid, <laughs> Metroid Prime. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm such a little kid. I clap when I'm excited. Yay! Things are finally happening a little bit behind the scenes. Metroid Prime, it was in development. We had no idea what was going on. Then it got completely scrapped. Who knows what that game initially looked like? Who knows what Nintendo had planned for the game? What their vision was? They decided, ah, we can't do this. Let's give it to Retro Studios, the company that originally made the Metroid games. However, that was years ago. Retro Studios, 
it's it's arguable, but they're not the studio that they once were. I mean, it changed it changes hands, people come and go. But essentially, there was just different people working there. So yeah, it's in the hands of the original studio, but who is actually making Metroid now? Like, who are we trusting to develop Metroid? And that was a little bit scary. In my in my eyes, Metroid is in a way the halo of the Nintendo universe. I mean, it's really our only first person shooter that we get from Nintendo. And every and, and Metroid 1, 2, and 3 were all stellar games for their time, visually, gameplay-wise, especially for Nintendo at the time. But we finally have some information on who is making the game. Still don't know what's going on with the game, what it looks like, any of that, but we know who is involved with working on the game. Retro Studios has high- by the way, they're Texas-based, so it's happening somewhere around me. I don't know where. I need to look that up. They have hired a new visual effects artist, the same guys that worked on Battlefield Hardline, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Borderlands 3. You can actually, if you go to this uh, I'll link it below, but they've actually linked to all their pre that like their portfolio their work or whatever It's really interesting like this Borderlands guy is showcasing specifically like weapon effects This is really interesting to see because this right here is a little bit similar to uh, Samus's plasma cannon then with shadow of the Tomb Raider you start thinking of the other visual effects of the caves and the atmospheres and the lighting and stuff like that that was in uh, Tomb Raider Battlefield Hardline. I haven't honestly played that game, but I have heard that there was some amazing visual effects in that game as well. And then this is on top of their previous hires. They had the developer at Playful. He worked on New Super Lucky's Tale, which I really enjoyed that game. The level design was really creative, really well thought out. James Beach, who worked on Crisis 3. And then uh, Steven, who worked on Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, which is... Oh, and... Halo, which is really exciting. Tropical Freeze being, in my opinion, the best Donkey Kong game, but in general, just an absolute amazing, brilliant platformer. Obviously, we're working on Halo. Like, that's that's a pretty big experience uh, to be going into a new Metroid game. I think it's really exciting. I mean, you have a lot of puzzle pieces coming together, a lot of really talented people, and I think it's pretty safe to say, at the very least, Whatever game this ends up being, it's going to look fantastic. It's going to look visually very pleasing, which again, the previous Metroid games always managed to look incredible for their time, especially on Nintendo hardware. Depending on how long the Switch's lifespan lasts, this could be the best looking game on Switch. I'm pretty confident there. All right, guys. Um, cool. <laughs> I know usually when news hits, news drops, I, I jump upstairs and I do it up there. But I did that last one a few days ago sitting here with the sales and you guys seem to really like it. And also having my computer right in front of me so I don't forget anything and I have my notes is really handy. So I'd be interested to know what you guys think. Do you like me doing these news updates sat here or do you prefer it when I'm up in my game room bouncing around? Uh, with all my games behind me. With all that said, uh, it's like a million degrees in this house as always. Oh, and I hope you're all doing very well. I love you all. See you in the next one. Subscribe. I want that million. And it's, it's up to you. I can't do it. There's only one of me. Bye.